Many years ago, the Chicago Tribune ran an article called Preparing for Bad News. It told the story of how the Russian government used to prepare its citizens for bad news. They, interpreted all, they interrupted all regularly scheduled radio and TV programs and would play somber symphonic music instead. Sometimes the music played for an hour, sometimes it played for an entire day, sometimes it played even longer. The purpose of the music was to prepare the people psychologically for an unpleasant announcement. For example, the death of a Russian leader or the death of a cosmonaut. The Russians had a point. People need to prepare, be prepared for bad news. Today's gospel has Jesus prepare people for bad news. He tells them that a great catastrophe is going to take place in their lifetime. Certain signs will precede it. History tells us he's talking about the destruction of the Jerusalem temple. This catastrophe happened about 40 years after his death. It brought to an end the Old Testament world. This helps us explain why Christians have always interpreted Jesus' warning of catastrophe as a warning also of the end of the world. And this is how the church uses it to refer to the end of the entire world. No one knows the day or the hour, not even John Hagee and all those television evangelists who claims that they do. The only one who knows is the Father alone. But certain signs will precede the end. Some people think the signs are taking place today. One sign is the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, especially amongst terrorist countries like Iran and North Korea. These countries have the nuclear capability to plunge our world into a dark age. One mistake or angry act could trigger an event that could doom millions of people or even our entire planet. No prudent person can take lightly such a disturbing possibility. For you see, we live in turbulent times. In today's Gospel, Jesus sets before us two sobering themes. The suddenness with which our life could end and the need to prepare for that end. These are serious themes that shouldn't be taken lightly. These are themes that we can't dismiss casually. That's why the church presents us with such themes as we come to the end of the liturgical year. It wants to remind us, as Jesus reminded his disciples, that a life on earth is a brief preparation for an eternal life to come. Therefore, we shouldn't get so involved with our earthly life here that we lose sight of our eternal life to come. No one knows when our earthly life will end or when the world will end. Only the Father in heaven knows. Therefore, we need to be prepared for it, for, it, for when it will come, it will come when we least expect it, as Jesus says, suddenly. As this liturgical year draws to a close, the Gospel makes us think about the end times for the world and for ourselves. Let's face it. The thought may be scary. However, our faith isn't geared to scare, but to save us. Today's readings call us to faith and draw on our faith to help face the end times without fear and trepidation.